What is up, gang? Kevin here, Life22. And today's book that I'm reviewing is going to be Moby Dick. So, I forgot my notes. Um, so, long listen, long listen. Herman Melville's Moby Dick uh, is apparently an American classic, uh, and it was like 29 hours, 29 and a half hours. It was a long, long trip. Um, very tiring. Uh, a lot of dumb whaling stories, uh, but they were used for character development and yada, yada, yada. Um, so, uh, the book starts out with uh, Ishmael, right? He's the main character. Uh, from everything I've read, because I did research afterwards, because I was like, man, did I... Did I get too much, um, you know, did I, did I miss something? What's going on with this book? You know, because it's just, there's got to be a deeper meaning here. And I had the same issue when I read Crime and Punishment. And um, just because it, I don't know, it didn't resonate with me. Actually, Crime and Punishment resonated with me afterwards when I was actually able to apply it to different areas of my life uh, and different people I knew and um you know their their flaws and stuff like that so uh, but i still had to do a lot of research before i even provided a review for you guys so just because i was like man what did i miss and then you know reading like okay i guess i see that i guess i see this and then all of a sudden things kind of come to you uh after reading it uh and it probably deserves a second read and, I, and from what i'm gathering what i'm gathering moby dick deserves uh three or four three or four solid reads from what I'm gathering from other uh, other people that have read it. Uh, ben Shapiro made it third Thursday book club for the month of uh, May, I believe. It was June. Shane's, Shane was June. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it was May. Um, and that's how long it, I started at the beginning of the middle of May. And I, yeah, definitely blundered that one because it's the middle of April, or middle of July now, and I'm just getting around to finish, giving you guys a review of it because I finished it last week. Um, but then, I, you know, then I'm doing homework and research and stuff like that on the topic. So apparently, from my research, though, uh, the most memorable quote is the opening uh, in... Uh, the most memorable uh, opening line in all of literature is what a lot of people are saying is, call me Ishmael. Um, I think it's weird because I've never heard that, but whatever. I mean, like, I knew who Herman Melville was as a young child. I was a Rugrats fan. That was the name of the little pill bug that Chucky found and named. So, I don't know, references there. Dogs going bananas. My neighbor's mowing the lawn. Sorry. Um, so yeah, they develop Ishmael and essentially he is He's a guy with nothing else to do, no purpose, and he says either, either, uh, either I'm going to shoot myself or I'm going to get on this damn boat, and uh, he gets on a boat, and he goes whaling, he becomes a whaler, and these people hunt down and kill whales, and he literally has like chapters on, you know, the sperm whales, effluents and fluids and their blubber and all the different things that you can, the oils they pull out of them, just, they have just tons of depictions of stuff like that, so, and all the science behind it, it was like reading a Jules Verne novel, because Jules Verne always gave me that, when I read Jules Verne, Jules Verne wants to like, break down the science in the middle of a chapter for you, You'd be like, well, listen here kiddo, this is happening because of this, 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 and this, and then kind of goes into it a little bit. Uh, you know, to the science of it, like how, how you know, how we journey to the center of the earth. Um, drawing a blank on the character of that book's name. No. Uh, Doctor. Anyways. Uh, or, uh, Percy Part 2. And, um, wow, well, now I'm drawing a blank on the main character of uh, Around the World in 80 Days. They talk about the science of going around the world and how, like, well, you lose a day because you regain a day and you jump forward in time and. So there's a day made up by going around the world, and ta-da, you know. But 
that's the science of Jules Verne. And uh, he kind of got into here more or less like a, a knowledge lesson on sperm whale stuff. The guts of sperm whales. And whaling and, and then there was just, you know, a relentless, you know, so many hundred pages of whaling stories. And, um, and they introduced you a series of uh, different uh, different characters. Uh, Queequeg, uh, they get on the Pequot, which is their boat. Uh, but Queequeg is uh, his, like, savage, cannibal compatriot that he meets at an inn. He's forced to, like, sleep in the same bed with him because Ishmael be broke. Ishmael broke. So he's got to live, and he's got to go, go stay at an inn, and he's got to share a bed with some dude he never met. And, yeah. I got buddies I won't share a bed with. Like, I don't know. It's weird. It's fine with your kids, not as adults, not when the dude's a cannibal, but they quickly become chummy, and uh, must be something about spending the night in a bed with somebody, <laughs> you become chummy or you hate each other, that's, uh, um, but yeah, so, you know, they uh, then they meet Captain Ahab, and he is out to get the whale, Moby Dick, the whale, the white whale, the whale that ate his leg, and he's constantly chasing it. Um, a lot of symbolism here. Knock it off, Cole. Boy. Boy he's, he's jumped the fence once. It's a six-foot fence. And he kind of learned to parkour the corner over here uh, when he saw the neighbor who was mowing the lawn was walking his dog. And he was like, I gotta meet that dog. Sam and Swish swim upstream and he just bounced and fluttered over that. So we had to extend the gate fence. Enough about coal. So anyways, Captain Ahab is hunting this whale that took his leg, and he's going after him with vengeance. And there's a lot of symbolism in the book in terms of like, you know, after like thinking back on it, doing the, re you know, doing some research afterwards, but like he's chasing this whale. And you just... You don't think about it when you're reading the book. He's chasing a whale. Whale ate his leg. Go get that goddamn whale. You get him. You get him, Ahab. And uh, you don't think about it. And then, you know, somebody says, no, no, he's not chasing the whale. He's chasing the chaos of life. He's, he's, it's more than just purpose. This is where vengeance and revenge and it just consumes you to the point that it will be your own demise. Because, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Moby Dick destroys the vessel kills everybody. Except for Ishmael, who is the only survivor. So, uh, hence, call me Ishmael. He's the, he's the main character. So, he's telling the story, and I don't think, I don't think anybody wanted him to be the main character. I think he just was the main character because he was the only one that was still left alive. Uh, any of them could have been main characters if, they, if Ishmael died in their stead. So, um, that being said, I mean, it, it brings up a good point. I mean, a lot of people chase the monster, right? This thing that lurks below, we can't see it, in, in the unknown, right? Like, the ocean's the unknown. The ocean is outside of your circle. It's, you can't see the unknown. You don't know what lies beneath the, the calm, tranquil waters. And it's something that could just obliterate you. And that's why a lot of people don't venture into the unknown, because they don't want to be obliterated. But, what's, what's life without the unknown, right? Like, you would, your life would be dull if it wasn't for the unknown, if it wasn't for the whaling stories, right? The, the things, that, the exploration, right? That, so, overall, you know what I mean? After I read it the first time, apparently I'm going to have to read it a few more times, but I've got other books to read in the meantime, so I'll let this one soak in, kind of ferment a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll tackle, we'll tackle a different book on a different day. Uh, or, you know, we'll tackle this book maybe again in the future, um, on a, on a, on a longer, when we have more time to read it. But, it's just one of those things, like, a lot of people chase them dragons, man. A lot of cheap people chase monsters. Um, and everybody's got a monster to chase. Some people are being held back by their monster, right? Some people in their own life, they're not chasing a monster. 
Monster has them, and they become the princess in the tower. They're being held hostage by their monster. I mean, I guess it could be one and the same, right? Like, you're... Everybody's got a monster, right? You're either chasing it, or it's got a hold of you. Or the fact that you're chasing it, maybe is its hold on you. Right? Ahab. He couldn't control his anger and rage. There was another captain in the book. Drawing a blank on his name. Um, I'm sure some of these notes I have here have his name. but um, So the other... The other... Um, Maple? Father Maple. No. Anyways, um, you gotta think that. Uh, there's a, so there's the other guy that's in the book, uh, and he's another ship captain, and he is asked, listen, that same whale, I encountered him, and he took something from me. I believe it was his leg, too? I, anyways, he goes, but I left well enough alone. He won. Why do you need vengeance, right? Like, that was the, the story, and that man lived to see another day. Um, you know, and... Wow. It's going to drive me nuts. And there's a lot of notes here, so... Daku. Um, yeah, no, he, he goes, I don't know why, and he tries to give him a lesson. You can, sometimes you cannot, if people are not willing to change, you cannot change them, right? So they're, he's chasing this monster. And somebody says, yo, what's wrong with you? He's blinded by the, the hunt of this monster he's chasing. He doesn't care what other people say, he wants his vengeance blinded by rage, right? So that's, I don't know, it's um, kind of like Crime and Punishment in that it's a very long and deep novel and you have to read it multiple times, but it does give you a good inflection on human life. And see, like right now, even just explaining it to you guys, I'm actually getting a better understanding of what I've read. So it's kind of cool, right? That's, that's how the book works. That's how I learned economics when I was in college. I was taking those classes, half falling asleep, and guy named Turbo at uh, one of the frat houses was like, Kev, you're in my class, you seem wicked smart, um, you know, will you tutor me? So I tutored him, and I got to go into all the frat parties for free, and I was content with that. And as I was tutoring him on something that I didn't think I knew a lot about, all of a sudden things started clicking together, and all of a sudden I was really good at economics. So made sense. It all just started to come together because I was actually able to look at it, put it in my own words, and just spew it out to somebody else. Processed. Um, so. But we will, um, we'll catch you guys on the next time. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've got, I mean, this is, this isn't the best review. I mean, obviously, like I said, there's guys out there that have read this book like 10 times and they're reviewing it. I mean, I'm not saying you have to come to my review. You come to me because you want to see where Kevin's life is taking him. And the book reviews are part of it. That's it. Like, I'm reviewing these books because you're following my life. This is Ed TV right here. I'm reading a book. I'm growing and gaining. You're following me on my journey. If you don't want to follow me, you don't have to watch the channel. You want a better book review on Moby Dick? Shit. Read the, go read the book and then go get a better book review. But at least you were like, hey, Kevin did it. I'm going to do it too classic literature following them down this road but i will catch you guys next time and we'll see you uh see you on the flippy flop